Hi guys, it's Debbie with Debbie J's Crafting Corner. Today I'm making a new card, doing something a little different. Okay, I like doing something a little different. Anyway, I'm going to be making a new light up card using the Halo Light from Pear Blossom Press and using some of Catherine Pooler's and Sizzix's brand new um, stamp sets. So I'm going to be using this one. This one is called 12 Days of Christmas. You've got all the fun things that are for the 12 days of Christmas. And what's fun is that the stamp set actually has everything numbered. So that is kind of cool too. So if you're wanting to do a 12 days of Christmas type theme, you could definitely do that. So you've got all of your, your partridge in a pear tree, two birds, two turtle doves, three, <laughs> <laughs> three hits yeah it's been a while since i sang that song anyway um this is what i'm going to be using and i'm also using something that i created just for you guys um i made some templates to make it a little easier to work with your light up cards so you may have seen a recent video i did where i've got a i've got one for the one light i use that the most often but today i'm going to use the one that i have made for the halo light and it's basically the same diagram you could make this yourself but you know what i've already done it for you and i just punched holes using a hole punch to do the place that is for the the button and for each of the lights so that i know exactly where they're supposed to go i'm also going to be using this guy which i haven't really used much i have been playing a little bit with the stamp and spin part um, but this is the stencil and stamp platform and yeah, it's it's fabulous. I've actually got kind of an idea as to what I want to do. It's fabulous for making wreaths, which I don't make wreaths because, yeah, I have had trouble with that. So we're going to do it this time, and we're going to do that with a light in the middle also. So that is going to be fun. Now, I'm also, and you probably already knew this, I'm using a grip mat underneath this. This is the one from Waffle Flower. I'm using it with the grid, but the grid does not line up with the center of this. So that means I have to try to position this somewhere where I think I can get mostly in the center. And I think that's about right. I'm going to say that that is close enough. And next, I'm just going to pick out one of the images off of that, out of that stamp set to work with. Now we do have a wreath here, but that's a little bit smaller than what I want to do. I, I actually skipped a step. Um, it's a little smaller than what I want to do for my, my life here, okay? So what I'm going to do instead, I'm going to use my template to position about where I want my stencil to go. And then I'm just going to use a pencil to mark my little holes the holes that go along with the LED light and the hole that goes with the button. Now I know where my lights are going to be. And now I can stamp and position everything around those. So I think what I want to start off with, let's do this first. I'm going to start off with the stamp that comes with the pear, that is from Pear Blossom Press. These are, this is the Pear Blossom Press. Let me get some of that tape off of there. Pear Blossom Press stamp and stamp and die bundle. And there are a bunch of stamps in here for you to be able to use on your interactive cards. I'm going to use the one that says push. And I'm going to also erase my... There we go. I'm going to erase my dot just so that it doesn't show through as much. But I can still tell where it was. And then I'm going to just take my stamp, make sure it's facing the right direction because I don't want it upside down. And go ahead and just stamp that right there. I'm going to also be using a lot of greens. So I think I'm just going to stamp this with some green. So this does act like a regular stamp platform. You don't have to do the rotation bit. The darkest one that I have out right now is this archival. I've actually got three different greens, so I'm probably going to be doing a little bit of each. And now we have our push there. Next, I'm going to put my sentiment down about where I think I want it. And looks like that is pretty much straight. And I'm going to stamp that one down in that dark green ink as well.
So one thing I did not do the first time around when I was just experimenting was I didn't mask off the sentiment, which means I had to stop where I was stamping so it didn't go over the sentiment. This time I'm just going to take some mint tape and put that right over my sentiment so that it won't, I won't stamp over it. And let's also make sure that we have some over that little push button um, spot as well. There we go. So now our sentiment is masked off so we won't accidentally go over it and we can still read it. And that means I can also bring my um, my circle back down closer. Now also just double checking to make sure that my the center of my S there is in the center of that circle. And you know what? It's a little bit off. So let's move this over a touch. Let's go ahead and start adding some stamps down. Now I need to make sure that I remember that that is where my light is going to be. I've got that dot there. So I've got the, the two images I'm going to start off stamping. Actually, I'm going to start off with just the one. I want to do the flowers first and then I can start adding in the greenery. Did this the same thing last time. So anyway, I'm going to put my flower there and we're going to stamp it in some red. Let's go with some cranberry fizz. You can go with whatever colors that you want. And this ink pad needs to be re-inked because yeah the colors are not quite as vibrant. Now I'm going to turn it one notch. These images are small enough that turning it one notch is going to be perfect for the type of full um, full wreath that I want to do. So you go one notch and just stamp and turn it again. So next I'm going to put in a piece of greenery to go along in here. I think I'm going to put it kind of in between the two. And we're going to stamp that one all the way around in some green ink. So let's start off with some Deck the Halls. And then again I'm just turning it one notch. I picked a different branch and a different ink. This one time I'm using some Simon Hurley and I'm doing the same thing all over again. So that adds a different color in there and it creates that big full wreath. So this is going to be pretty cool. Again, I'm just turning each time I'm only turning it one notch. So I added some more branches and I added some more flowers. So everything looks good. Let's go ahead and remove our mask. And that is perfect. That is exactly what I wanted. So you can definitely see the push and the greeting. I love that. And it is really full. You don't have to do quite as much as what I did on here, but I think this turned out nice. So what we're going to do next is we're going to trim this down a little bit because I need to have a little bit of white space on my cards, I always do. And then we're going to start assembling everything to turn this into a light up card. I'm going to go ahead and get my light added to where I want it. Just adding it on with some double sided adhesive and I still have those little dots to tell me where everything is so I can line this up on the back before I press it in place. So first thing, I always burnish this down because for me, I don't know why, but double-sided double -sided tape does not really hold for very long for me. But it's going to be a little difficult to try to add liquid glue to metal, or at least for me, um, and then have it stick to the card. So I'm going to just line this up just like we did before. I know that this is where my button is and there's my button. So I'll line my button up. I'm going to press the button and try to line it up about where I see one of the circles. So I've got a circle right there. Okay, so we've got that there. Here we go. That should be about right. I'm going to press the button. That looks good. 
So now I can press it into place where I know that battery is. And this is basically done. All we need now is to add our foam and then add it onto our card base. And I think, I think, I was thinking I was gonna go with white, but I think I might actually go with red if I have any red, or I can do a red matting layer. And I may just do that. And I think I'll go with a red matting layer. So that will look kind of cool and that'll make it just pop just a little bit more, which means I need to trim this down just a touch more. Which is one reason why I made sure to move the sentiment over as much as I did. So I'm gonna trim this down by about an eighth of an inch on all four sides. So it'll stay pretty much still in the center. And this is, of course, easier if you do it before adhering everything down. So this is now going to be four by four and a quarter by five. I'm sorry, three and three quarters by five. That's right. Let me just double check that. Yep. And then my matting layer, I want to cut down to four by five and a quarter. So there'll be about an eighth of an inch of the red all the way around the white. And I'll go ahead and glue this down before we start putting all of our foam onto the back of our piece there. And of course, I'm gonna do another quick test just to make sure it looks the way I expect it. And it does, I think that's gonna be lovely. So let's go ahead and start adding some foam to the back. I am gonna add a little bit of foam underneath the edge of that ring so that it, um, it pops up a little bit. So I'm just trimming a little bit of the foam. Now the foam that I'm using is the best ever, I'm sorry, the world's best foam tape by Pear Blossom Press. This stuff is fabulous. I say that in every video, but it's true. This stuff, I'm actually, I was really, really excited when she first came out with it. And I was waiting for like about a year um, when she was talking about getting this. I think it was about a year. Anyway, I was waiting for it and I was so excited when I got some and I went through my first roll pretty quick. This stuff um, has special features. First off, it is the perfect thickness for us to use with our lights, which is fabulous. You don't have to fold your tape and try to guess as to how thick it needs to be. The release paper comes off super easy even with my big old chunky nails and it is um, repositionable for 30 minutes yeah, so if you put it down wrong, you can move it. And that is one of the best features ever. So I'm just going to add it just like you would your normal foam tape. You do need to make sure everything is nice and level. And like I said, it is exactly the right height, which is fabulous. There we go. And then all we have left to do is just to put it onto our card. Like I said, this stuff comes off super, super easy. Okay, let's go ahead and line that up on our card. Leaving that little bit of red all the way around. And there we go, it lights up. I think I wanna add a little bit more to this though. And I do have some Nouveau drops over here. So I think I'm gonna put some red ones and some gold ones on here. So we've got these little stems that'll have basically a little bud on the end. I'm gonna put a little bit of red on each of those. Just adding some little, they could be berries, they could be buds. And then I'm putting a little bit of the gold right into the center of each of these. So all of our little poinsettia flowers have got a little pop of gold.
And there we go. That finishes up that card. I'm going to try not to touch the red just so that I can get the button. There we go. I think that turned out super pretty. So anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this and you've got a little bit more to think about about ways that you can use some lights in your cards just to add that little bit of extra something. And you guys have a wonderful day. I will catch you in the next video. Bye guys.